Okay, new microphone is in position now that I've finished breaking things. One, two, one, two, one, three, one, two, one, three, one, two, 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 one 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 three 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 four four one two one two three four five six seven eight nine ten nine eight seven six five four two three four two three four five six seven eight nine ten. This is a mic check, this is a mic check. One two one two one two one two. One two three four five six seven nine. Seven eight seven six five four three two one. Everybody good. Everybody good. Everybody good. Mic check. One two one two one two one two three four five six seven eight nine ten nine eight seven six five four three two one two 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 one two three four five six seven eight nine. You good? You good? You good? Good. One two one two three four five six seven eight nine. I broke this microphone too. Jeez. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Everybody good? You guys all good? Okay, thank you. Check, check, one, two, check. Yeah, it's my name's Adrian. Adrian, nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah, it's good to meet you. Excellent. Are you an actual uh, police officer? Uh, I do parking enforcement. Oh, okay. Yeah, so part of the Because I'm looking thinking, what good is a cop without a cop? Yeah, so I work so, privately uh, for you, okay. Park Corp. Okay. Uh, we're licensed through Toronto Police. Uh, oh, okay. I issue tickets uh, and I conduct in house enforcement. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah. 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 Have you talked to your colleagues about uh, I honestly I haven't seen anyone yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was on holidays last week, uh, and I just come back on uh, Friday. Uh, yeah. That was when I picked everything up. And, uh,
Doug was horsing around with, with the wind about the, and he took the flag away from her. Doug was, I've got that picture in my office of Doug waving the rainbow flag. flag. Yeah. The media's been using that all day yesterday. It's cute. Well, yeah, yeah. But that's different. He, he was here because he's, he was convinced that it was good for his brother and blah, blah, blah. But I remember Rob. He actually said happy to me that day. Rob was Rob was hanging around. Yeah, he was sulking at the back. Sulking at the back. Doug yeah. was up there having a great time. And he was having a wonderful time. He was horsing around with. Yeah. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. You know what I chuckle about is the photo I've got of that morning. He and Kathleen are just standing like six feet apart from each other. Oh, I know. Yeah. Well, he actually took the flag away from him. And, and was waving, waving it and around. That's, that's wow. the picture. Well, he thought it was a good media. He was very good at getting media. <laughs> you know, for years, he very quietly, their company donated all sorts of labeling services and so on for Pride. Well, I noticed he did wish to have a good Pride parade, so he's, you know, I mean, the stupid thing at least, he should just stay out of that. I know politically what he's oh, worried about. Uh, he's worried that he'd go marching down the street and everyone would boo. Well, that's what would happen. Of course, that would happen. Well, probably. <coughs> I think half the people would have to be somewhat cheering. You know what? Mel Aspen. Oh, he was great. Mel did it, and everyone cheered him on. Oh, yeah, that was different. That was somewhat different. Very different, yeah. I remember. 
remember when Mel was here struggling with the alphabet, you know, say transgender. Yeah. But he, he had a good car, you know. You know what Mel was? Yeah, I'm going to cry. Oh, yeah. They're pouncing on them. Look, we don't allow police to cry. I think they can attend other functions. And does he have his Yes, he got I know that guy. Uh, what's his name? Is that the guy with the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say hello. <laughs> <laughs> we already tried the bus. Do it.
Michael is the co-chair and uh, Brian is the secretary of Pride. We'll talk about co-opting the establishment. He said he answers all the complaints now. I said, oh, I'll send you one. <laughs> it's a riot, isn't it? It's a big crowd here. It's gonna rain. Probably. Yeah. yeah it's rained before here. Well, yeah. <laughs> We've even yeah. rained in our parade once or twice, and we still. Yeah, carry last on. year a little bit. Doesn't yeah. matter. Just no tornadoes. <laughs> it's 12:30, but it's gay time. Yeah. It means they won't start to pop. That's smart. They did that last year. So that makes pride total. They've got the radicals have gone totally established. Oh, they are. I know. I think I, I'm in favor of Michael being coaching because he knows more about. I worked with Michael ten years ago, and he does more good work. But you know, you can't have it both ways. You can't be a radical and only. Well, Susan. I was here the first year they did a fuck. 
in the city of Toronto. I am so happy to see so many friends here today to commemorate this significant day in our history. My name is Kristen Wong Tam, Toronto City Councillor for Ward 13, the first openly elected lesbian to be elected to Toronto City Council. Thank you. And now I have a new title, which is Mom. a beautiful healthy baby boy and uh, I can tell you that my wife is also doing very well so she's recovering and so is the baby getting stronger I will tell you why I'm here I don't miss this event for anything I am proud to be your MC today we have a very special performance to kick us off I'd like to introduce EJ Kwanda Benz and his daughter Sagate both of them will be coming to the podium they are indigenous cultural educators and performers who will open the ceremony with a traditional acknowledgement and welcoming song. Please join us. My goodness, there's a lot of people here. Good morning, 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 good morning. My uh, indigenous name is Anagegi uh, which translates to uh, people of the sky, joining of the clouds. And I come from um, a small First Nation north of Toronto, about 21 hours north of here, called Wabidanga, otherwise known as White Sand. And uh, my clan system is the Loon Clan, people who are responsible for maintaining order in our communities and our families. Um, I want to talk about the land acknowledgement. Oftentimes we have uh, a script that we say during our school systems or our offices and whatnot. And sometimes it becomes just that, a script. And we forget to really think about what it is that is being said. And it almost tends to lose meaning and significance. So I want us to be able to take a different approach to land acknowledgement today, to be able to listen to what it is I'm about to share with you. Land acknowledgement, we must be mindful of the power of one's words that are used with respect to identifying a group of people claiming ownership or title to a region of which Toronto is situated on. There is this notion that the peoples of the Mississaugas or the Windat people 
or the people of the Six Nations Confederacy were the initial and primary residents of this territory. While some believe this was a shared understanding of the land between these nations, not one claimed ownership over the other. The Métis Nation um, <coughs> were not included in this acknowledgement because they, they came into the equation post-contact. And we need to be mindful of that, not that we are dispelling or removing any significance from the Métis people. Regardless of which nation the peoples, um, regardless of which nation the people uh, were here first, this territory is the land many, and I repeat, many different indigenous people have called home in the past and continue to do so today. Indigenous people never claimed ownership of the land. It was the land that determined how long the people would remain in this territory, which was determined by the changing of the seasons. The people speak for the land, protect the land, and use only what is necessary from the land while returning it to its original <coughs> natural state. It was these very waterways that we take for granted today. These very waterways here were used to guide indigenous people during the changing seasons. Indigenous people traded with one another and gathered medicines and foods during their travels in this region. This supports the notion that indigenous people were nomadic people who maintain a steady movement dictated by the seasons. Those who are not indigenous to this territory, and I might say that I am not indigenous to this territory because I come from the woodland territory north of here, I and everybody else who is not indigenous to this territory are guests. And with that responsibility, we must be mindful as guests of our interactions with one another not to impose ways that do not align with respect and humility. There is this phrase we have right across indigenous culture around across North, um, North America that we use in our ceremonial circles called to all our relations. And this gesture is a way of acknowledging that we are all equal, that we are all one, that no one is greater than one another, and that we must act accordingly loving one another through kindness and sometimes we forget that at this time i want to sing to you the land acknowledgement a land acknowledgement song otherwise known as a, a welcoming thunderbird song and my daughter will be dancing us uh, dancing here in the style called the butterfly dance the butterfly dance and we are in the time of the butterfly dance as we are now changing into the season of spring spring is the rebirthing the regrowing, rejuvenation of life. And so the dancer herself is to mimic those movements of the butterfly, which originates from the nation of the Omaha, Nebraska people in the Southwest. And as I sing this song, we need to be able to acknowledge ourselves, that we are an important being in the physical world that eventually will bring us to a spiritual world. And so be able to reflect on a moment in your life that brought you great happiness and to be mindful of your essence of who you are. We 
Thank you, EJ, for those moving words and the reminder of where we are and how we carry ourselves forward uh, from the days here, recognizing that we are still on Indigenous territory. And thank you, Sagate, for that beautiful, moving performance. Can we give them one more round of applause? Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to... Um, uh, thank everyone, of course, for joining us today. Um, every single year we come together on the rooftop of City Hall and, uh, and we, we have a, a number of reasons to, to come together. Uh, one of them is, uh, is the people that bring us together. So I'd like to thank Pride Toronto, who is present today, uh, including board member Kristen Malloy, the executive director Olivia Numa, the Toronto Public Service Pride Network, the 519 Church Wellesley Village BIA, Toronto P Flag, Canadian Trans Network, and the many other organizations, friends, and coalition partners that come together with us every single year to particularly raise the pride and uh, transgender rainbow flags uh, as we proclaim Pride Month. A dedicated Toronto Pride team celebrates an internationally acclaimed Pride Festival that boldly and passionately celebrates diversity, courage, freedom, human rights, and love each and every single year. Although Pride has come to represent LGBTQ2S plus communities the world over, it also represents the many challenges, struggles, as well as the resilience and achievements of this movement. Today we recognize those who have stood up for LGBTQ2S rights in the name of equality. This year is a very special year. It is also the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Riots, one of the key events that helped to launch a worldwide movement and inspired others to move towards acceptance. In Toronto, we also get to remember some milestones, including the bathhouse, bathhouse raids in 1981, which what still stands as a watershed moment for Toronto's LGBTQ2S community and our liberation movement, our sexual liberation movement. As a community, we acknowledge the hurt and healing that continues in the wake of the eight beloved men and community <coughs> members killed by <coughs> Bruce MacArthur. It has been a time when so many have come together in support. And it is in those times of support, in coming together as a community, that the work and the healing will be done. The journey has been long to get to where we are today, and there still remains a lot of work to do. And we do this work by advocating with one another. We do this work by overcoming adversity to find a way forward as our community decides on how we want to grow the movement and who is going to be with us. As we gather today in the seat of municipal government here at City Hall, we also celebrate love and diversity and the right to be who we are as we look forward to the vibrancy of the month ahead. And it's not just the month ahead, but it's also the months ahead of this month ahead and the years ahead of the, this year ahead. I'd like to introduce Mayor John Tory, who will bring his remarks and present a copy of the Pride Month proclamation to Pride Toronto board member Kristen Malloy. And the mayor will also be acknowledging all the dignitaries that are here today. And I'd like to just say a special thank you to Sherry DeNovo, who is here. I, Sherry's always here with us every year, and I hope I don't miss any other dignitaries. Thank you.
counselors left it to me to miss the dignitaries instead if I do, but uh, I'll begin with that. May I begin, first of all, by saying, Kristen, to you uh, and to Farah, congratulations from us all um, on the birth of your, your child. Uh, it's, a, it's a very special occasion, and it's a child that's going to be born to two very loving uh, people, and uh, all I can say to you is that I hope that I know the demands of parenthood will probably make it less possible for you to continue with all the motions and so on that you bring to City Council. <laughs> I certainly understand that. I, I just want you to know that, that no, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not counting on it. Um, I will introduce uh, my colleagues in just a moment. I do want to apologize for not wearing my Raptors jacket today, but it clashed with my pride tie. And so I don't want it to be taken as anything less than full support for our great team as they proceed ahead uh, with the game tomorrow night. What a privilege it is for me to be here uh, again this year to raise the rainbow and the transgender flags and to proclaim June as uh, Pride Month uh, in the City of Toronto. And I think the very fact that you have so many members of City Council who I'm about to introduce here today indicates the the solidarity we have uh, and the celebration we feel uh, about this month and how important that it is and how important it is for us to continue to remind ourselves of how fortunate we are to live in this great city uh, and it's important to remind ourselves of the way of life that got us here more so now than ever. Uh, may I welcome uh, on your behalf uh, here members of City Council and just in the order I wrote their names down, Councillor Gord Perks, Councillor Mike Layton, Councillor Gary Crawford, Councillor Josh Matlow, Deputy Mayor Michael Thompson, Councillor Joe Cressy, Councillor Paul Ainsley, Councillor Paula Fletcher, Councillor Shelley Carroll, and Councillor Mike Cole. Did anybody else sneak in while I wasn't looking? And I had noted to, to uh, acknowledge the presence of, uh, of Reverend Sherry DeNovo, and also I gather Reverend Jeff Rock uh, is also here, both of whom provide a great deal of spiritual leadership, spiritual in a very broad uh, sense of the word uh, in our great city. So I welcome all of them, and I want to join uh, Councillor Wong Tam in welcoming Akio Maroon, the co-chair from Pride, Michael Erickson, co-chair from Pride, and Olivia Numa, the executive director of Pride. So please welcome all of them. I had often occasion to speak during the recent Collision Tech Conference which brought so many people from around the world and now we have fans coming to celebrate our sports achievements from around the world and you know I say that diversity is a fact in this city but inclusiveness is a goal <laughs> that we have and these are, this is a goal that is fundamental to us and it's fundamental at the same time as we acknowledge the goal that we acknowledge that there are still far too many people who are experiencing discrimination and intolerance and hate uh, in the city. And that is one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why proclaiming a Pride Month, the Pride Month, and this flag raising are, are necessary, as well as being enjoyable celebratory events, they're necessary events to have in our city each year as a statement as to who we are, uh, but also a symbol of our commitment to do more and to make more progress uh, to address important issues which remain outstanding, as Councillor Wong Tam mentioned. Since 1991, the Toronto Pride Festival has been a vibrant celebration of diversity and inclusion and creativity, and it's become not just a celebration of all the things that may arise out of its historical roots, but it's become an important arts and cultural uh, festival as well that bring people together as only the arts and culture can to celebrate diversity and to celebrate courage and to celebrate some of the struggles that have been experienced by our LGBTQ2S plus uh, communities. And so as we begin Pride Month in 2019, I think it's important that we acknowledge that many are still affected uh, by many different forms of discrimination and, and struggle but uh, no people more so than the, uh, those who are the relatives and friends uh, and community, fellow community members of the eight lives that were eight people whose lives were brutally taken by Bruce MacArthur in the Church Wellesley community over the span of several years. I took very, very seriously my responsibility, as did my colleagues, to work closely with the LGBTQ2S plus communities to fashion a process which will get answers to the many questions which exist with regard to that unspeakable tragedy and I'll remain steadfast in my own determination to see that those answers are produced one way or another but I have confidence for now in what I believe will be a trustworthy process led by Justice Epstein uh, as a solid beginning. Ultimately it comes down to a rebuilding of trust and that is something that stands before us, something that has to be worked at by all concern, a trust that has to be earned. Meanwhile the city and its council remain committed and dedicated to supporting all communities who face systemic barriers and discrimination and bias. This will sometimes simply take the form of standing up and, and speaking up when that kind of hatred shows its face, but it can also be seen in the city's strong support uh, for many different organizations, including some that have been mentioned by Councillor Wong Tam, 
uh, the 519, the LGBTQ2S archives, organizations such as the AIDS Committee of Toronto, the Black Coalition for AIDS uh, Prevention and Asian uh, Community AIDS Services. That commitment of advocacy and support, because it's both, it's advocacy and support, stands strong from this mayor, I know from this council, uh, and from the city as a whole, because it is right, because it is just, and because it is important now more than ever, given what's going on seemingly in pretty well every other part of the world. This is not a time for backsliding. It's a time to continue to move forward, to continue to make more progress, to continue to address these issues as challenging as some of them may be. I want to make brief mention, as Councillor Wong Tam did, of the theme of Pride this year, uh, the anniversary of the Stonewall Riots in 1969. The City of Toronto, along with Pride, honours those involved in the Stonewall Riots in New York City, who started a world-changing movement 50 years ago. Just as Councillor Wong Tam mentioned that you remember the bathhouse raids here, that they have marked a very important turning point for us, for a similar movement here uh, in the City of Toronto that really uh, 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 represented the demand that people should be able to live their lives freely. So I'm looking forward in the midst of those very serious uh, challenges that stand in front of us as well to a month of celebration and fun because that is something that builds strong communities as well. We will showcase as part of that fun the diversity that is our strength and how enriched we are by the millions of people who come here from around the world, some of them fleeing persecution because they are people that are from the LGBTQ2S plus communities. We will acknowledge during the month that discrimination and bias are still real as are threats and acts of violence. And we will state loudly and clearly that that is why it is important that we stand together to fight these forms of hate. Just by gathering here today and by raising these flags, we are sending a message to anyone who needs to know that they are safe here in Toronto, that they are supported here in Toronto, that they are embraced here in Toronto. And I add to that my own personal commitment as mayor because I think it is important that when you're in a leadership position in government or elsewhere that you will continue to stand up to hatred and discrimination or violence of any kind, including hatred or discrimination based on sexuality and gender. Setting the international standard for inclusivity must be our goal, nothing less. And that is a goal which requires continuous effort. And as part of it, yes, and that's worthy of a round of applause. Continuing forward with that goal is to partake in all the different festivities, and there's a roster of activities that could appeal to anyone that going on this coming month. And I think that's an important part of showing that commitment, showing that embrace, showing that uh, that uh, that we remain steadfast in our determination, notwithstanding what is going on in other places in the world. May I, and I, of course, consider a very important part of that to be to march in the parade, which I will proudly and happily and with great fun do on the Sunday. I just conclude by thanking P Flag and all the partners. Kristen mentioned a number of the others uh, who have helped to make uh, this uh, event possible today, this month of events happen, and of course, uh, culminating in uh, the events that will happen on Sunday, the 23rd. Uh, and to say a thank you to all of you for coming here today. And on that note, uh, I will simply get out uh, these uh, two proclamations. Uh, J'ai deux proclamations dans les deux langues officielles de notre pays, en français et en anglais. And I will ask. Uh, Kristen Malloy, a board member for Pride Toronto, to come forward and accept uh, this year's official proclamations of Pride Month in the City of Toronto. I also want to make sure that I thank uh, the uh, City of Toronto's administrative and professional staff, Katapsa, uh, the Toronto Professional Firefighters Association, the City Manager's Office, and the Economic Development and Culture Office for their generosity. Code for when you're being fed over there a little later on, that's who's feeding you. So say thank you to them as well. Thank you very much for being here, and thank you to this community, these communities, for being so resilient and for continuing in your efforts to raise awareness around Pride Month and to make sure we continue to move forward and make progress. And Kristen, I will now present you with these two proclamations. Felicitations. Good afternoon, persons and gentle beings. We gather here about to raise our rainbow and transgender pride flags on City Hall's courtesy flagpole 
and it's an unmistakable symbol of colonialism, following with a beautiful and educational Indigenous opening ceremony. I hope the irony is not lost on anyone. Where we are and how we got here is something we must all consider in these uncertain times. And we should reflect, following on the remarks of Mayor Tory and Councilor Montam, on the meaning of this proclamation of Pride Month from our allies at the City of Toronto. Pride's partnership with the City has been, since its inception, a mutually beneficial one. The Economic Impact Report reveals that in 2018, Pride Toronto directly and indirectly stimulated $681 million in economic activity in the GTA. Supported 5,600 jobs, while overall generating nearly $253 million in tax revenue from Pride-related consumer activity. Overall, a great return on the city's investment from the $260,000 grant. But the city gives us much more than just funding. We appreciate the vocal support and allyship from our Toronto councillors and mayors, especially at times, including recently, when our public funding and legitimacy has been threatened by other councillors in City Hall, or by politicians at other levels of government. Threats that are committed publicly and sometimes more privately. The real motivations behind these threats are typically cloaked by the issue of the day, be it an overblown concern for public nudity or desire to censor a particular group's right to protest. And more recently, some have taken exception to the legal and democratic vote of our membership not to invite uniformed police contingents into our parade, marches, and our festival. In continually having to withstand these external threats to our funding, Pride stands in stark contrast to the other cultural festivals in Toronto, whose funding goes unthreatened, with the primary distinguishing feature being that we are queer and they are not. We and our allies must continue to call out these asymmetric threats to our funding, no matter the source for what they are, acts of violence directed toward the queer community an attempt to constrain and control our message and identity. And as with any threat, we will rise above it. It has often been said, but bears repeating, that the first Pride Parade was a riot, <laughs> and the first Pride Festival was a picnic. <sighs> as dedicated, passionate, and experienced activists, we take it well to heart that we could again accomplish either on a budget of zero should the need arise, but we remain grateful for the continuing mutually beneficial relationships that we now enjoy. For they allow Pride to put on an extraordinary, extraordinary festival seeking to share the cultural richness and diversity of our community with the city and the world. That amazing festival would be impossible but for the tireless efforts of our talented staff, including our executive director, Olivia Nuoma, and a huge coalition of unpaid volunteers, over 1,500 in 2018. And it would be impossible without the support of our allies at City Hall. And that allyship is more important than ever as Pride faces new challenges and new opportunities with each passing year. The rise of condo developments and the influx of larger businesses manifests the force of gentrification. It's forcing more and more we live in frightening times as political realities surface new threats to the lives and existence of queers, women, racialized, communi racialized community members, and immigrants, and our trusted institutions too often fail to serve and protect us equitably. We must continue finding new ways to protect ourselves and each other. We live in a world where many of us are still unfairly targeted, still attacked, and still killed for consenting relationships between adults or for how we express our gender, for differences in our physical or mental abilities or health, and for too many of our queer siblings because of the color of their skin. To support pride, to support pride means to support us, all of us, not just most, but every single one of us, 
on equitable terms every single day. Not just, not just for a weekend and not just for a month, but all year long. Pride Toronto's mission, vision, and values states, no matter who you love, how you identify, or who you choose to be, you will be safe, valued, equal, and proud. That's a commitment, but it's one we cannot make alone. Because as long as pride remains unsafe for some of us, it will be unsafe for all of us. A responsible pride must never sell out its weakest, less mainstreamed, most marginalized members for the sake of economic partnership, for reasons of profit, or political expedience. We and our allies have been guilty of this in the past, and part of our journey is recognizing this and making our own amends. But how does one begin to account for past harms and abuses, some still fresh? To say, I have done harm and am accountable. I am working hard. I have done better and I will do better. How does a person, how does an organization, how does a city? All of us must move forward, not ignoring or denying our past, but acknowledging it while demanding real change be demonstrated in continuing this important work. The health and success of our relationships moving forward must not be measured in handshakes and photo opportunities, or in dollars, but in lives saved, in safer spaces, and equality of treatment every single day. So, we graciously accept this proclamation in the presence of friends and allies, while recognizing the great volume of work still to be done. We appreciate the city offering clearance, approval, and support for Pride Month and for all of your continued allyship. Thank you all for coming, and happy Pride. Thank you very much, Kristen, for those amazing words. I think you remind us all about the reasons and the values of Pride and why we are here today and why we will continue to stand with Pride. It's, uh, it's important for all of us to remember that uh, when Stonewall took place 50 years ago, it was actually drag queens, transgender communities, black, queer, indigenous people that actually stood up and said no more to the violence and brutality. And so, we have to stand with those communities who first rose and led to the liberation movement that we know today in the modern era. So thank you. Thank you for that reminder and thank you for bringing us together. I want to... You can, yes, thank you. And thank you to all of you for coming out to celebrate, of course, Pride Month, but also to do the work, the hard work that has to be done each and every single day in the different communities that you work in. I want to thank the Toronto Public Service, many of you who are here today. I know that you work <coughs> in this tower in the many different buildings across city, uh, the City of Toronto, and the work that you do as on behalf of the of City Council, uh, we thank and salute you to our LGBT employees of uh, city, city Hall. Thank you. Um, I would like to now invite our platform party uh, to the courtesy flagpole right behind me. We're going to raise the rainbow and transgender flag. We will be also inviting uh, the speakers as well as um, uh, the board members. Uh, I think every single one of you who are here today, can you please join us? And Olivia, I see you. Please make sure you come out here. Uh, we are going to raise the rainbow and transgender flag. Let us not forget that it, as we get ready to raise these flags in this city, there are many other places around the world where this could not happen. There may be places around Canada where this cannot happen. In communities of the north, in smaller communities, in big cities across Canada perhaps where this may not happen, in schools where this may not happen, in places of work where this may not happen. So we fly the flag here until everyone can fly those flags everywhere. And after this, we welcome you to take a photo and then of course to proceed to that beautiful catered barbecue lunch and thank you once again to our sponsored and our guests. Thank you.
we'll start off by making sure the mayor is there. <laughs> some wind. <laughs> protesting us? What are they protesting? I have not a clue. Us? Uh, I have a Muslim? They want Sharia law? <laughs> I don't mean that. Is I have a clue. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay.
you know what group that is? I thought I, I thought I heard them say Sharia justice. Well, it does look Muslim, but yeah. Well, then they're gonna have to, to do some weird stuff. <laughs> okay, I shouldn't you say. That. Why would, <laughs> Never mind. Mean, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. It's just, uh, yeah, if that's what they're going on about, I'm sorry. Somebody should arrest them and throw them out of the country. They're going on about Sharia. That don't, we don't. If they're going on about Sharia, I, their sign kind of looks like it. Well, I could go down and ask them, but I have to get back in, and I hate that. So we're modeling it on the dignity network, right? Okay. Because yes. we're yeah. working with that. I, I, I recognize it when you were describing it. Right, okay. so, you know, it's an established model and we can just let it stand. Yeah, no, thank you, thank you. And we'll get you an invitation and hopefully we'll see you again. Yes, yeah, okay. absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, go. It's a lot of so. That's interesting. Sounds interesting to me. That's a neat little little uh what do you call it? Gimbal. Gimbal is selfie stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I use the gimbal, yeah. Just saves from when my hand is oh, shaking yeah. in the cold, right? Yeah. So. I'm one of those nerds that I'll usually, I'll probably build one myself. Yeah. <laughs> built my own V-bike. You know what? This one was uh, ordered on, on Amazon, so it's yeah. pretty cheap. What did you pay for it? It's 30 bucks. 30 bucks? All right. I'm like, feel it. Here. Holy crap. Not too bad, right? No. That 30 bucks. It that's good. So it's like a, a gimbal. That's, it is. that's cool. Oh so 30 it's, bucks, it's man. It's when it's off. And then we're 30 gonna... bucks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What? That's Take what a picture of you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like sure. That. And can you actually walk along oh, wow. and get a smooth shot? Yeah. Look, Saxy. There you go. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
I like your outfit. Thank you. I sing every year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember you last year. <sighs> More sunny last year. <laughs> yeah, first time I've had layers on. I've had like, I'm wearing layers. That's true. I guess that's pretty warm. <laughs> Normally I'm cold or hot. <laughs> oh, I almost wore my, my black long pants today. <sighs> grateful that it didn't rain. I felt a few drops, but it wasn't. Yeah. Well, they would have taken it indoors, so it had been really bad. So, I'll take this. Right? I'm going to do that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Ich habe die Zahlung gut, ich habe die Wand gekürzt. Ich habe die Zahlung gut, ich habe die Wand gekürzt. 